Today's question comes from Nathan in Mississippi. Nathan writes, How can I stop worshiping money? I'm currently on baby step 3B, and throughout these years of grinding away to build my savings, I found myself so focused on the goal that it's becoming all-consuming. I work as a truck driver, and I work anywhere from 13 to 15 hours a night. I'm tired and I'm burnt out. Recently, I feel God is telling me to slow down and go at His pace. How can I still attack this thing without feeling like I'm putting the money before everything else? Whenever I think of the word worship, Dave, um, I think of fear. Think of in awe of. And like we just talked with the last caller here, I, I spent years worshiping money because it was something I was scared of. Whether it was the scarcity, I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know how all these stock markets were going up and down and my neighbor's houses were worth whatever. And so it be, took over. And when I got some insight about it and some knowledge about it and some people around me that could coach me through it, it lost its power. Because I got some, I had a relationship. Um, I, I learned more about it. I wasn't scared of it anymore. Um, and then I think about worshiping God, and I think there's an awe and a reverence and a, uh, I'm gonna say like a destructive fear, but a healthy relational fear there. Um, what do you think about that? I think that's accurate. Um, the 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 thing is, um, you you step to the side of any item that becomes an idol, mm -hmm. and you set it in its proper place in your mind and in your spiritual walk in your life and you say okay this is an item it is a tool mm -hmm. money is really of no value except for what it can do it, it's it makes a lousy god mm -hmm. it makes a lousy master yep um it also um makes a, a a lousy slave even so uh you know you 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 want to control the money not it control you and there's a difference that you know the, the only larry burkett used to say the only difference in saving and Hoarding is your attitude. Hmm. It's not an amount. Hmm. It's not a process. It's not a level of intentionality. It's not a level of diligence. Both are very diligent, savers, investors, and hoarders. Hmm. They're very. It's just your attitude about it. It's what are you trying to get from it, not what are you doing. Right. And not the amount and not how many years you've been doing or something like that. So I'm very intentional with money. I actually always have been, even before I went broke. I've always been intentional. Uh, but but I, I am a manager of it since I went broke. Before that, I was more of a worshiper of it. I thought it was going to bring me happiness. I, I thought if it, yeah, if yeah. you think it's going to be your provider, yes, then you've got it. You've given it too much power, and then you can set it to the side. But you know the fact that you've been working hard and hitting some goals, and you want to slow down. That's not a worshiping issue. That's just a realization that I'm at baby step 3B, which is where we tell people to move from intensity to intentionality like the last caller. Yeah, and, we, and you have to do that. You have to change your identity, right? Your identity was one of running and crushing and getting this thing done, and now you're moving to one of intentionality, right place, right time. Now what are we going to do moving forward, right? Yeah, I'm, We're not not a sprinter, for our I'm not a sprinter. I'm a marathoner. There you go. I changed my name. Yeah, and uh, I used to be a sprinter because I had to do that. I, I had, had to run. To. The cheetah was chasing me, so I had to run. And and now I can just calm down, and and I don't have to work seven days a week, fifteen hours a night, right. you know. And uh, God is telling you slow down. Yeah. I, I think that probably was God. And uh, but it's it. But worshiping money, you can do when you don't have any, when you have a lot, when you're in the middle of it, uh, when you've gotten the other side of it. You can worship at any time. That's a position of the heart. It's not a position of the money. Uh, or a baby step or anything like that. Um, and, you know, that does say, so here's the thing. Again, I think it's a good, both of these are questions are somewhat parallel. Uh, and, and so it, it's really important for you folks out there to hear, I am all about, we at Ramsey are all about you going absolutely crazy, and I don't care how hard you work. I don't care if you're working 40 hours a day. For, for a short period of time to get your freaking mess cleaned up. You spent four years, five years, nine years making a mess. You are not going to clean that up in nine days. You are going to have to roll up your sleeves and sacrifice and hurt. There's going to be pain involved, discomfort, inconvenience. I'm not going to see my baby. Your baby's asleep while you're working. You need to get your butt in gear and clean up your mess for the sake of your family. That type of stuff, is gazelle intensity, we call it, is for baby steps one through three and is generally somewhere in the 18 to 24-month range. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't ask people to do that for five years. It's very unusual. Sometimes you have to, but it's very unusual. 
most of the time it's one month to 24 months and you are done once you get out of debt everything but your house and you have your emergency fund in place we suggest at ramsey that you take your foot off the gas back it off a little bit go into marathon mode and now you've got a more balanced schedule you drop some of those side hustles and now you're going to spend more time with your family, which, by the way, is going to be a better quality of time because you don't have this debt hanging over you and you're not preoccupied with MasterCard calling your phone while you're trying to play with your kids. Right. And I, I also think it's important that for the last caller, too, there are seasons of every single job when these are 60 or 70 hour a week months, right? And that's just part of life. And I think the challenge that most have is they don't know how to have that conversation at home with their spouse, with their kids. Um, and I'm thinking back to before the, before we went through this book season. Uh-huh. Like Sheila and I sat down with the calendar and said, "Here's what this is going to look like now." Yep. And she's all in, got it. And then here's what it's going to look like when my foot comes off the gas, right? And we can reconnect. And then this. So I think it's about being intentional about it. Like you mentioned it, it's about being intentional. But you can't be scared of hard work, man. In, in the name of, if I miss this, in the name of nurture. If I miss this one game, then I'm the terrible dad and I'm yeah. the worst and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But, d- but don't set your life up where you miss them all right. for the rest of your Absolutely, life. Absolutely, yes. Because you're so freaking broke, you can't breathe. That's right. You know, so get the mess straightened up. And and sometimes it's just to hit a goal. Yeah. Sometimes it's just to do some stuff. Like uh, tomorrow, uh, I for the next three days, Sharon and I have Rachel's kids. <laughs> and we won't be doing anything <laughs> except Rachel's kids <laughs> for three days. Uh, the next Thursday... I will leave here early in the morning and, and end up in Orlando, and I will have lunches and dinners and events and building wealth. And then we have Entree Leadership Summit that begins on Sunday. I'm speaking at a church on Sunday morning. And uh, for the next seven days after that, I'm probably going to do 80 hours. Mm-hmm. And I don't even have to work. Right. But I'm doing that to hit some goals. But there's an ebb and flow to this. Right. You know, and, and that's scheduled. I'm emotionally prepared, and it's not forever. It's for seven whole days. He's not going to kill old Dave. You know, he's not going to whine about it, you know. But I'm going to hit some serious goals during that time, and our team is going to hit some serious goals during that time, and I'm leading the charge. The front of the horse with the sword pointed forward, you know. And, uh, hey, game on. But I'm not doing the 80 hours a week anymore, seven days a week, for... You know, months on end. And you it's did it for a, a whole season week for this, right? Yeah, I, I did a long time ago. Yeah. For but, this, right? And my kids all survived it. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. <laughs>